So today with us on Store Talk, we're honored to have special guests with us, Legends Edition of uh, Toledo, Ohio. Here on Store Talk, we walk in our purpose, on purpose, and today's guest is definitely doing that. A great athlete. Um, when you hear about the greats for St. John's and the Bowling Green Falcons, you hear this young man, not only a student athlete, but... I mean, not only an athlete, but he was a great student athlete, an academic All-American as well, too. Today, we have with us the one, the only, Mr. Joe Jakubowski. How you doing today? I'm doing great. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, Not only, like I said, you was an athlete, man. You was a great student athlete. You uh, excelled in the classrooms, um, even in college at a high level. Like, what mentality did you take from your high school going to college? And being that it's already hard, you playing D1 basketball, but you was killing it in the classroom. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I got to credit my parents, my mom and my dad. Um, they, at a young age, they instilled in me um, – you know, uh, an appreciation for the importance of education, of building and developing and training your mind. And, you know, at first, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, at first, it was forced by them. Um, but eventually, probably in college, I was a slow learner. I, I got it. And I started to really appreciate the importance of education, mainly because one day, as we all know, even for the great ones, uh, the ball stops bouncing. Yeah. Um, so it's always important. Uh, I was I, I appreciate that in college. And um, I, I recognized that and I, I was able to, uh, work hard in class and get pretty good grades. Yeah. Were, was it like that when they pushed the athletics or did you gravitate towards it? What age were you when you first started playing sports and what sports was that? And how was that with them? Sure. So I, um, I picked up, a I started playing organized basketball probably around four or five in, in the church league. Um, I went to Calvary Bible Chapel on Alexis road and they had a couple of church leagues and it was for young kids. And that's my first memory of playing organized basketball. I, I also played baseball, too. Okay. Um, a little bit of flag football, but it was mostly baseball and basketball growing up. Yeah, yeah. When did you start to excel or start to see that your game was taking off and you started to really love basketball? Well, I, I think, um, you know, I think early on my dad thought that I, I had some talent. He believed in me at a young age, and so – um, he started to put me in positions and at camps and stuff where I got to play and develop my skills. And I, I think probably um, around fifth or sixth grade, other people started to see that I was uh, developing quickly into a really good basketball player where I had the p potential to be a, a really uh, a above average basketball player. That's when I, I, other people started to recognize it and they started to invite me to different AU teams, different camps, things like that. Yeah, and then you, uh, what made you go to St. John's? And when you went to St. John's, were you aware of the rich tradition, the history, the great players that you were becoming and following behind? Oh, absolutely. So I, I, I started to, I heard about St. John's growing up playing AU for uh, uh, guys like Sean Patterson, who uh, coached a lot of youth basketball, and then Mike Wilson as well, who is now the assistant coach at Toledo Christian with Tyler Boris, and those guys. Um, I, I played with them and they, they, when I played with them, they told me about St. John's and my dad then would take me to games. And I, I remember watching John Floyd play, who was a legend at St. John's, a really yeah. great player. And and then yeah, after John him, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, Brian Roberts yeah, to guys like that. Yeah. So once I went to those games and I saw, you know, the wars that they played against Scott and Libby, I was hooked. And I, I, I told my dad, Hey, I want to go here. When I, when I, when I end up in high school, I want to go to St. John's for high school because of, because of the basketball and because of the tradition. Yeah. They cost us multiple city championships, man. <laughs> do, you, do you remember, Um, I don't mean to be off track here, but do you remember that, that game, I, I, that legendary game when St. John's was down by 20 points? I think it was yeah. a city championship. <laughs> we talked about it when I had John Floyd on and he said that he felt the pressure because his brother won the city championship and he felt like he wasn't going to get to do it. And they ended up coming back. I, that was the year after I graduated. Yeah. Okay. That was crazy. Yeah. I was at that game. I'll never forget that down by 20 with three minutes left in the fourth or whatever it was. That was a crazy game. And those, those games were always great. And, the great thing about city basketball back then was uh, it was a unique league because it was parochial and public, yeah. uh, but the, and there was different styles meshing together, but man, it was always entertaining high level basketball. Scott Libby always had great teams as the St. John's and other teams. So uh, I really miss that about the city league. I know it, it's not so much that now, but um, I miss those days. 
Yeah, and and here are your um former uh teammate, your former schoolmate Mike Floyd at Central. They got uh ooh, they they schedule is hectic. All them Detroit teams they play. They said they're playing the top player like in the state every game. Yeah, so yeah. Like here the city league goes down, but then that that leagues kind of pick up to where they play more competition. Yeah, and that that that's a mixture of uh uh Michigan Catholic schools and Toledo yeah. Catholic schools, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So with you being at them games, seeing that, that's what made you want to, you know, be in the big moment. Because it seemed like that's when you shine the brightest at UT, Savage Hall, hitting all the big shots and making all the big plays. Is that what made you want to be on that floor from watching it and seeing the older kids? Oh, absolutely. So um, watching those games, I I, I mean, I, I wanted to play with the best. I wanted to play in the best league. Um, that was just how I was built. And once I saw those games, once I realized where the best basketball in Toledo was played, which was in the city league and St. John's was a part of that. I wanted to go to St. John's and that was, that was inspirational and me wanting to go there and attend there. And my parents sent me there and, um, you know, then I had my career there. So, uh, but to answer your original question, yes, that, that, that was the original inspiration. Yeah. And how was it when, um, it came up to you deciding what college to go to? And then after you say that, give words of encouragement to the youth that might be going through that same situation, trying to figure out what school to choose and, you know, what's best for them and how they should go about that. Um, uh, you mean as far as deciding uh, what college to go to and all that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, a lot of it would, a lot of it, you know, depends on, um, you know, your options. So, um, I, uh, I didn't start getting recruited heavily until probably my junior or senior year. Um, and at that point, um, I, I, I mean, I was going into my junior year and there were questions about whether or not I would get any, and I, I would be a division one player. And then I got, I had a really good AU year, my junior year going into my senior year, I played for Cincinnati AU and I got in front of a lot of coaches. And once a couple of them offer you, it's like, it's like the stock market, your price goes up and everyone <laughs> wants to offer you. So going into my senior year, I had a lot of options, which was great. And um, I think to give uh, – and then I, I ended up at Bowling Green. It was a bit of a, a tale because I first committed to Rice University, and um, I liked the coach there, and it was a great school. Um, and I my brother also lived down there, so I thought it would be a good fit. But then I decommitted because the coach was leaving, who, <laughs> who recruited me. And then I ended up at Bowling Green State University with the late Lewis Orr. Um, and uh, that so that was a bit of a winding road. Um, but as far as advice to people who are going through that same process, uh, you know, one thing I would say is make sure you um, go to a school where they where they really want you, where the coach is really interested, where he recruited you or she recruited you and they uh, they really like your game. Um, also, I, I think the style of play is important to consider based on your skill set. You know, what is your skill set? What kind of play would you fit in in college? Uh, those are really important considerations. Um, and then academics, too, because as, as we discussed, the ball is going to stop bouncing. You you want to if you have a good school to go to that is high academically and, and basketball will help you get in there. Um, that's a big consideration as well. Um, those are my those are my biggest things to consider if, for people, for kids who are getting recruited, who are facing those same decisions. I mean, if you want me to go more into that, Ken, but those broadly speaking, those are the three things I would I would tell people to consider. Yeah. And when you first were on the campus um, at BG, you had practice. Did you see yourself fitting in with the team? Did you see yourself being able to be an imp impact player? Because you started four years, right? I, I did. I started. Yeah, I, I got in there uh, and immediately they, they put me in the starting lineup as a freshman point guard. Um, And I uh, I made the all freshman conference team uh, as a freshman. Um, our as far as team success, we finished in the upper middle of the MAC. We didn't win the MAC, but we finished okay. We didn't have a senior on our team, um, but yeah, I I got in. I played a lot of minutes my first year, which I was grateful for because experience yeah. is is king. And to be able to play with uh, uh, immediately as a freshman, I, I thought you know I learned a lot. I was able to develop a lot, of game, get in the games, get get that valuable experience to continue to develop. Yeah, what were some of your memorable moments um, there at BG? Uh, so yeah, some some games that really stuck out in my mind. Um, I I remember uh, my freshman year, we played Kent State, um, and Kent State was the best team in the MAC at that year, and they were ranked, and uh, they came in on a in early March, 
to play us at Anderson Arena, um, the venerable Anderson Arena, uh, where when I don't know if you've ever been there for a game where it's where it's packed, but it rocks. It's it's a really yeah. cool atmosphere. But we played them, and you know we were not favored to win, and we ended up beating them on our home court, and they were ranked. And I had a really good game. I think I had 20 points and 10 assists, one of my best games as, as a college player. Um, and that was really cool uh, to be part of that and to beat them. I remember that game. Um, and then a couple of other moments individually. I remember hitting a buzzer beater my sophomore year to beat Georgia State when we played them at Minnesota. Um, we were down by two. And I hit one with two seconds left. That was a cool moment. And then as far as team, I mean, we the biggest moment for me was when we won the MAC regular season title my sophomore year. Um, with Nate Miller, he led us. He he was one of the best players on our team. Brian Moe and Daryl Clements, we we won the MAC regular season. Um, that was a great moment because we had won in a long time. Uh, so it was 2009, um, and then we lost to Akron in the semifinals. But and then, but then we played the NIT, which was a cool experience playing the NIT. Uh, those those were probably the the top three moments. Another moment I remember is I had a really good game against uh, Valparaiso in the ESPN Bracket Buster uh, series. That was my junior year. Um, so a couple of cool individual moments, but the, the one I cherish the most is the the NAC championship we won my sophomore year, 2008-2009. Yeah, and you were known for your great skill and sharp shooting. What specific routines did you use to train, and how did you um, be so effective in those areas? Yeah, I, I you know, there, there's – thinking about this question, there there's a lot of different drills – um, and a lot of different variations of drills that I did growing up and developing into a basketball player. Um, broadly speaking, though, if I want, if I were to give advice to people who are looking to be get better, um, one of the things that I did growing up that I thought was really helpful was just going to a lot of camps. So I, you might you might have heard some some of these camps like the Chico Vaughn basketball camp. I went to that mm -hmm. growing up. Mm -hmm. um, I went to um, you know the the high school camps like the 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 Rossford one, the the St. John's one. I went to the Bowling Green one. And I went to the Steve Mix Basketball Academy and had did a bunch of camps there. And I picked up a lot of drills, a lot of ball handling drills, um, a lot of different things that you can do, um, shooting drills. And that's where I really honed my skills. And I would take them home and my dad would work with me on those drills. Um, and uh, I, I think that that's really important is having those drills um, to hone your skills, to get those fundamentals down, um, because those people take those for granted. But then, mm. you know, it's not just those drills, though. It's not just those fundamentals. you got to be able to be, apply them. And um, where – and I, I think I did that because my my dad, to his credit, he really helped me. I really appreciated his help in this. He put me in a lot of different leagues. I played a ton of spring basketball leagues, AAU basketball growing up, third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade into high school, um, where I played a lot too. So I did drills. I worked on my game. I worked on my ball handling, my, my, my basketball, my shooting skills. But then I would go and, uh, you know, practice them in an actual game situation where I play top talent. And I think right. that combination is, is key, is being able to do both. Um, and I think that's what really helped me develop is, is, is being in both. Because I, I've coached high school before, and um, you can just tell the kids who have played a lot of basketball, they're not they're, – they're comfortable in those game situations. Like, I remember playing Scott and Libby, and I wasn't – I wasn't like – I was it wasn't – like being a deer in the headlights. I wasn't nervous out there uh, because I've been in those situations hundreds of times before playing against guys like OJ Mayo and Bill Walker in AU in the yeah. AU circuits playing against Derek Rose. Um, so those situations I was familiar with and it was because I played a lot of AU ball, but there, uh, but I, I will say this, that um, you could also err in the other direction by not, by playing a bunch of games, but not honing your skills, honing your drills. So it's a combination of both. And if you can hit that 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 balance, I think that's where you can really develop into a great player. Yeah, that, that was great. That was great. Um, what was some of your biggest challenge that you faced it while you were in school at uh, Bowling Green, and how did you overcome them? Well, I, I think, uh, broadly speaking, the biggest challenges were just the ups and downs of a, a college basketball season. I mean, we, 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 we won, but we – by no means didn't win every game. Um, I mean, my three of the four years, we were 500. Uh, that sophomore year, we won the MAC championship. So being able to bounce back, showing resilience when you didn't have a good game or when, when you would lose. I mean, we we lost big a couple of times. And I think the the biggest the biggest thing that um, to learn that I learned from that is just getting up off the ground um, and getting back into the gym and grinding and working hard. Because in college basketball, especially in the MAC, anyone could be anyone. You're never out. There's a lot of parity, at least when I was playing. 
Um, so having that resiliency, not to get too down on yourself, to maintain your confidence, having a short memory is really key. Uh, for example, I remember our, my sophomore year when we won the MAC regular season tournament, uh, regular season uh, championship, sorry, um, we played uh, at the beginning of the max season, we played Miami, we played Ohio, and I think we played Akron and we dropped all three. We lost all three games wow. and I had particularly poor games, those three games. And we were down and out. The coaches were, you know, really panicking, of course, because dropping three games like that at the beginning of the MAC that puts you really behind. And what we did, and I credit our senior leaders is we came together, we had a team meeting and we just said, hey, we got to get this. We got we to gotta get this going. We got to make adjustments, but we got to we got to believe that we can win. Uh, we got to get back into the gym, you know, make our adjustments, practice, practice more, practice harder, uh, get in, get into the gym to make to, to take those extra shots. Um, and once and once we got together as a team and we got together and really coalesced as one mm -hmm. unit, we rattled off. I think I mean, we ended up 11 and five. So we rattled off the next. 11 out of 13 games to win the regular season. So uh, I, I think that resiliency is so important because I, I, especially today's day and age where I think kids get down and they, they, they lose their confidence very easily. Um, basketball is a game of highs and lows. Um, and the person who perseveres and it works harder and just and doubles down, I think is the, the player who will eventually succeed. So. Yeah, and how can they mentally get ready for that, being that some people might come from a winning um, program where they don't lose a lot, like you said, and then get in college and start losing? How can they help their self from not, you know, allowing it to affect them and be mentally, you know, stable? What's some things they could do? I think um, the, 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 there are some players are better than others, but just having that unwavering belief in your ability. I, I mean, the greatest shooters have very short memories, um, and they have that 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 unwavering confidence um, that they're going to hit the next shot. And I think that's such a gift. I mean, oftentimes coaches don't like it because they, they shoot probably shots they shouldn't. But uh, in the long run, those shooters ultimately are the better shooters because they have that confidence where if they have a bad game, they know that that's just a that's just a anomaly. They're going to come out and they're going to have a better shooting game. And then just as a player, uh, I think that 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 confidence is so important. But not not cockiness, because an overconfidence can also be um, a problem, because if you're overconfident, then then oftentimes you get lazy, you get sloppy and then you end up not 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 being able to overcome those that, that adversity. So having a healthy confidence, having a strong work ethic, getting back into the gym, looking at the film, seeing where you can improve, really, really get into the, into the nitty gritty um, and 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 not 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 not. Um, not taking losses too personally, but having a short memory, that combination, um, there's more to it, but that combination I think can really help players o overcome those, the, that, that inevitable adversity, because the fact of the matter is in college, you're probably not going to win as much as you did in high school because all the great high school players are now in college. Mm -hmm. And to your point, um, you're going to face way more adversity. Yeah. And um, how did playing basketball um, in college at a high level, how did that shape you um, after basketball being an athlete? So uh, I think um, for me, uh, it, it taught me, you know, a, a mental toughness. I think um, it taught me discipline, time management. Um, I think those are the big things that I took away from being a basketball player and being a division one basketball player, uh, that character that you build through adversity. Um, those, those are the things that have served me well after, after college Um uh, and so when I when I when I left when the ball stopped bouncing for me and I entered into a, a career, um, those things really helped me. I applied those things. So I went to law school and I'm I'm an attorney now. But even in law school, it's a grind. I mean, there's tons of tests and it's it's very competitive. I was very comfortable in that atmosphere because it reminded me a lot of basketball. It reminded me a lot of high school basketball, college basketball, where you had to work hard, where you had tons of you had a lot of competition. Um, and where, whereas other kids, you know, they weren't ready for that and they struggled. Um, I, I was prepared and I, I did well. And so that's probably, probably the best example of how I've, I used that, 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 all the things I learned in basketball after basketball in my career.
Yeah, last couple of questions. I'm gonna get you out of here. I wanted to ask you, being that um, be, being with you being an attorney, do you have to just go in there, or are your um court cases serious like the ones we see on TV, the trials and stuff like that? And if it's like that, do you have the same comp competitive edge as on the court as when you're in the courtroom, or you don't have those serious trials? Uh, great, great question. So, um, <laughs> uh, it's it's not like it, it is on TV, but I will say this: that there is that element of competition. Okay. In litigation. So uh, we, we call it litigation. It's, it's, it's what you said. There's trials. And uh, sometimes I am in the courtroom and sometimes I am arguing with opposing counsel and there is a, a level of competition. And um, I really do miss that about basketball. And so part of my competitive edge gets fed by being a lawyer. Um, so I really like that about being an attorney. There's there's downsides, but that's certainly an upside. And so I like the strategy. I like trying to work hard and figure out what arguments work best. It, there is a lot of parallels with how I play basketball, for sure. Yeah. Do you ever tell the uh, the kids about your your time being a basketball player? You kind of push it behind you. Uh, you mean my my kids right now? Uh, yeah, my children? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have. They're, they're pretty young. So my oldest is eight. My youngest is two, and um, I haven't really told them much about my career. Uh, but I try to nudge them into playing basketball <laughs> I, instead of a football or a baseball. I throw I roll out of the basketball. The first gift I got my two year old was a basketball rim, a little Tykes basketball rim. So I'm trying to get them to, you know, go the way of their father and, and follow yeah, them up. But right. right. you never want to force that on anyone, right? You want to, yeah, you want to, yeah. you know, encourage them. But if they have another passion, you know, just like my dad did, I want to support them and help them in that passion. If it's not basketball, uh, great. If it is, even better. Yeah. And how do you want to be remembered as an athlete when they think about Joe Jakubowski? What do you want people to remember you as? Uh, you know, as a basketball player, um, I, I definitely want to be remembered as a guy who um, was in the gym, who was a gym rat, who worked hard um, and developed because I, I just I think that that means something, especially in our country, that, um, you know, if, if someone can work hard, if it, if there's a person who can work hard, they, there's a lot they can achieve. Uh, yeah. I think of someone um, I think of guys like, uh, you know, who didn't have a lot of ability, like I'm not. I'm not comparing myself to Steph Curry because Steph Curry's on a whole other <laughs> level, but um, the, I don't think he had a lot of physical ability. And since he wasn't very tall, he didn't yeah. jump very high. But man, that kid, that guy is going to be—he's probably the greatest shooter ever. Um, yeah. And uh, he, he, I mean, he uh, he worked hard at his game. To his credit, he, he developed that skill. He worked hard, and I think that's inspirational to kids. And I think that's why so many people uh, relate to Steph Curry is because of that. Uh, he's not very tall. He's not—he doesn't have the superhuman athleticism. He just worked on his game. He's a terrific shooter. And I, I, that's how I want to be remembered as a guy who maybe didn't have the most talent, but I was able to make the most of what I had by working really hard. And you were shooting from the rocket like Steph Curry before Steph Curry. <laughs> you see, you, you definitely were shooting from the rocket because all the teams thought, hey, let's just run zone like y'all couldn't shoot. Like, I never <laughs> understood that. Why are we running zone and they shooting us out the zone? Then we go, man, we getting backdoor. It was, just, it was just problems every time. It was just problems every time. What do um? What do you want? Yeah. To, um, what's your goals as far as being an attorney? Like, how far do you want to take it? What's your goals in su being a successful, um, you know, attorney or lawyer? Yeah, I mean, I, I um, I just my my main goal here uh, with being an attorney is is being of the best service to my clients. Um, that That's the number one client. The client is king. And so no matter whether I'm in the courtroom or drafting a trust, whatever I'm doing as a lawyer, I want to make sure it's it's a benefit to them. That's a value to them. That's why what I want to be remembered for is being able to do that for my clients where, where when they meet me and they have a legal issue, they have a legal problem that when they leave me, that they can say to themselves, hey, I thought Joe really helped me with this. I'm better off meeting him than not meeting him. Uh, that's why I want to be remembered for there. So, Thank you. and, and you're right. Uh, those, those, uh, those, <laughs> those UT uh, battles, man, I, I, I miss them. I mean, there, there were so many of them and you, you're absolutely yeah. right. It was almost like a chess match where we, we would adjust and you guys would adjust and there'd be all kinds of adjustments in the game. Oh, those were fun times, weren't they? Yeah, heck yeah, show us. Um, what advice would you give uh, um a future athlete or athlete now looking to excel on the court and the classroom like yourself? Man, whatever comes to your heart, get in words of encouragement. Yeah, I I I would say to kids growing up who want to play basketball, you know, I, a lot of what I said in this interview, you know, 
get out there and, and, and work hard. I mean, that that's one thing you can control. You can't really control how tall you are. You can't control. Um, I mean, you can control to a certain degree how high you can jump, but there are certain abilities that you may have or may not have. But one thing you can do is you can work absolutely hard. And another thing is you can work smart too. Um, working hard is not enough. You got to be able to work smart. So putting your head into it, figuring out what the best drills are, going to camps, going to getting yourself in leagues, putting yourself out there, playing against the best competition. That's mm-hmm. another reason I went to St. John's because I wanted to play against the best. Um, that all makes you a better player. Um, and it's not going to come easy. It's very difficult. I mean, if you really think about it, statistically, there's hundreds of thousands of high school basketball players across the nation. And then when you go to Division One, there's only a thousands or tens of thousands. And then if you want to be a pro, it's even less of that. So it's very, very difficult to get to those levels, and it takes an insane amount of work. Even LeBron James, with all his gifts, mm-hmm. he had to work insanely hard to become a top five basketball player ever. Um, and so that that's always something that you can do. And then also finding mentors. If you if my dad, you know, to his credit, he really helped me. Um, and if you don't have a dad like that, find someone. There's plenty of people out there who want to mentor kids and want to help them out, and and they just want kids who are willing to work, willing to do that. Um, so if you don't have a mentor like that, go find someone who can help you out. Uh, there's plenty of people out there. I remember in Toledo growing up, there were plenty of guys like, like Chico Vaughn. I remember him, yeah. you know, he really wanted to help me out. I mean, he saw how good I was and he wanted to help me out. He believed in me. Uh, there's a lot of people out there like that. Sean Harrison, Mike Wilson. Uh, there's a ton of people helping me out. And for kids growing up, there are a ton of people out there like yourself. Like there, mm-hmm. there's plenty of people. So just finding them getting out there, I think is hugely important. There's, there's, more, there's a lot more to it, but I don't want to keep you too long, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, we thank you. We're spotlighting you, a legend of Toledo, um, you know, coming from Toledo, being a, a great player with a great mindset, um, you know, loving the game, having an impact on the game, but doing it the right way and even showing kids, um, you know, that you can be a D1 player and you can play at a high level no matter what you may think. If you work, you put in the time, you put in the effort, you put in the thing, the tools to get you where you need to be, you can excel. That's why we do these interviews to show, to highlight, and to, you know, allow people's journeys to be, you know, talking about because most people might think I want to go to school and play, but then I don't know if I want to be able to shift to another career, but you're a prime example of doing that. You competed, D1, now you're about to be a great lawyer, you know, so you're evidence of that. So we, you know, we spotlight you today for that and we, you know, appreciate you for this opportunity. Absolutely. And just to uh, piggyback off that, I, I 100% agree. And I, I just I think that I'm a, a great uh, an example of someone who may not have jumped the highest or been the tallest player, but um, I still was able to achieve great things. And I think a lot of kids out there are, are just like me who can do the same and do better than me. So I, I'm, I'm rooting for them. If you have that dream, chase it, go after it. Um, I mean, there's no harm in doing that and you'll you'll be better for it. Yep, yep. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, Joe Jakubowski. Thank you for having me. Yep.